graph the following functions and their inverses. Include the graph of the line y equals x. All right, so f of x is equal to 2x plus 8. Let's work in blue for that function. 2 thirds x plus 8. Uh, I know it has a y-intercept of 8. And I'm going to choose another value. Let's say 30. f of 30 would be 2 thirds of 30 plus 8. And so that would be 20 plus 8, which is 28. So I have another point, 30 comma 28. All right, so let's graph that. I have 0, 8, and I have 30, 28. All right, and let's draw the line through those points. All right, now let's work with the inverse function, and I'll work in orange for the inverse function. All right, so we have f inverse of x is 3 halves x minus 12. And so I know I have the ordered pair 0, 12, uh, 0, negative 12. That's the y-intercept. And let's choose an x value. How about 20? f of 20 would be 3 halves of 20 minus 12. And so that would be... 30 minus 12, which is 18. So I have the ordered pair 20, 18. 0, negative 12 is about here. And 20, 18 is about here. Drawing the line through those points. All right, so I have f of x and g of x, the function and its inverse. Now, we were also asked to graph the line y equals x. So let me do that in, in uh, purple, line y equals x. The line y equals x uh, would go through the origin and then has a slope of 1. So you know, 10, 10 would be a point, and 20, 20 would be a point, etc. So let's draw that line. So, I've drawn these reasonably well. Here's the line y equals x. We should notice that there's a symmetry about the line y equals x. So notice that if I go from one point to another on either side, there's a symmetry about, those, about that line. There's points the same distance on either side of the line y equals x. And every function and its inverse has this symmetric property about the line y equals x. Graph the following functions and their inverses include the graph of the line, again, y equals x. So now, if we wanted to graph f of, uh, g of x is equal to x to the fifth, this might be fairly difficult. We haven't done a whole lot of work with x to the fifth. But let's set up a little table of values here. Again, I'll work in blue for the first function. So we have a couple of you know, you know, easy points. We have, say, negative 1, 0 and 1. If x is negative 1, g of x is negative 1. If x is 0, g of x is 0. And if x is 1, g of x is 1. So we have a few points, but if we just went with those points it would look like a line. And we should hopefully know that it's not a line. So let's choose another value. What if x was, say, 1 half? If x was 1 half, then x to the fifth would be 1 half to the fifth which is 1, let's see, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 1 32nd. And similarly, if x was negative 1 half, g of x would be negative 1 32nd. And so we have some points 
you know, net one half, one thirty second. That's very close to the or uh, to the x-axis out here, and similarly on the other side. And so for g of x is equal to x to the fifth, we get a curve that looks roughly like this. Now to graph the inverse of this function, what we do, what we can do, is invert the variables on the, uh, from the function that we just uh, found the table for. So if I wanted to graph x versus g inverse of x, what I can do is take those original ordered pairs and invert them. So the first one's kind of boring because they're the same coordinates, negative 1, negative 1. But for the second point, I could go with negative 1 32nd, negative 1 half. 0, 0, negative, I'm sorry, positive 1 32nd, positive 1 half, and 1, 1. So I have negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 32nd, negative 1 half. So that would be about here. I've got 0, 0 and then 1 32nd, 1 half. And remembering, if we sort of think about that line y equals x, so if we think of the line y equals x, and remembering that every function and its inverse exhibit a symmetry about that, we can draw the rest of the curve using that symmetric property. And so there's the function and its inverse, and exhibiting the symmetry of those two functions about the line y equals x.